Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi and here we are in Pathfinder Solution Series and in the chapter of oscillations and waves, I have brought forward two problems on waves traveling in water. Uh, the first one is from build up your understanding 30, which is deals with surface waves. It's a basic question at JE mains level. And the second one is the check your understanding 12, which is a less discussed concept of hydrodynamic shock or uh, travel of uh, sound waves inside the bulk of water. Okay, so I'll just present to you the problem statements here. You can pause the video and have it try. Right, the first one, as I said, is a simpler question. Uh, language is slightly difficult. So try to read it carefully, apply your concept. And I think you should be able to ace through this. Is the second one we are going to discuss on this particular video, a slightly tougher one. I would place it at JE advanced level. Okay, so once you understand the language and concept, I think you should be able to go through this also. Okay, so I'll go in the same sequence. We'll start off with the build up your understanding problem. And at the end of the video, I will do give you the practice problem on a similar concept of a blast wave, okay, that appeared in one of the national level examinations. So please do stay till the end of the video to have a grab at that practice problem. So first one, in a cylindrical vessel of radius R, water is filled up to some height a small iron ball is dropped at the center of the water surface. A time tau after the ball is dropped, water surface starts moving up and down with a portion having amplitude more than any other place on the surface. Explain the reason for this occurrence and find an expression to obtain a best approximate value of the speed of surface waves based on the information given in the question. Okay, so what is happening here? You might have seen this uh, in uh, real life also when you drop something, there will be some ripples that would be created also known as surface waves, which travel radially outward in all directions. So imagine this kind of a ripple is created at the middle of a beaker whose cylindrical radius has been mentioned in the question. You should realize that this point after tau seconds later bounces much larger height as compared to the neighboring situations because it can be considered as the region of constructive interference. So how do you explain this? You would say that the surface waves which are primarily uh, transverse in nature, there will be a longitudinal component also, but we'll be only requesting the uh, uh, transverse component here. So the transverse waves go to the surface and hit the uh, periphery of the vessel and then bounce back and then again constructively interfere with the one that has come down. Okay, so the surface waves travel back from distance O to A and back to O in tau seconds was mentioned in the question. So the 2R distance has been taken tau time, therefore the speed of those surface waves can be easily estimated as 2R by tau. Okay, so this is a basic question. And now let's move on to the second one which is the shock wave understanding. Uh, this is slightly troublesome for the students who don't understand how a shock wave or a sound wave, shock wave is nothing but sound wave that travels inside water. So just give it a try and then do stay till patiently at the end of the video to understand this concept, okay? Water is continuously flowing at a speed V one meter per second in a steel pipeline of radius R is equal to five centimeters. A valve installed in the pipeline is closed almost instantaneously resulting in an abrupt rise in water pressure known as hydrodynamic shock. What should the minimum thickness of the pipe be in order to provide a safety factor of eta equal to five with density of water and speed of sound in water and tensile strength of steel or the breaking stress of the street steel has been mentioned. Okay, so slightly uh, intriguing. So we'll try to go in a stepwise manner here. Okay, so we should understand first of all, what happens when you suddenly stop the water flow? Lot of things on the board, as I clearly say every time in the video, don't read things on your own. Just follow my lead. I'll try to explain step by step. Only watch on the part on the screen where I'm pointing and explaining. Okay, so look to the left of the screen. As you could see that there is a depiction of a pipeline, which we'll assume that contains a water, which is flowing towards right. And there is a point A at which you close a valve. Maybe you are shutting down the flow here. Okay, so the same picture has been crudely depicted in this diagram on the right of the screen at the top. 
Okay, so imagine these water layers are moving with a flow velocity of V and the shutting of valve, this point A has been depicted here. Imagine someone has shut the gate. You could see this yellow vertical line I'm depicting. So because of that, the DM elements or the layers of water which were originally moving with velocity V here would suddenly get stopped at T is equal to zero. Due to this sudden stoppage, you can assume that there is an excess pressure delta P that would be created here. This delta P information will travel backwards like a sound wave. Remember, excess pressure in any bulk travels as a sound wave back in the direction from where actually the pipe is. So that velocity C that I'm depicting here is the velocity of the information. Remember, C is not the velocity of the mass elements. It is the velocity of the information. What is the information? That there is an excess pressure here. So the subsequent elements also will feel the same excess pressure, but with a time delay. So if you give it a time t seconds at a distance of ct, imagine this length is ct, the information of extra excess pressure reaches here. And in the next dt seconds, imagine the information reaches a length of cdt, which I've depicted here. So during that cdt seconds, the next dm element, which was supposedly moving with velocity v, should be stopped. Okay. So just to give you a uh, visual picture of what is happening, imagine someone is shutting a real gate here. The travel of this hydrodynamic shop can be visualized as if there are some virtual gates which are getting shut after some time. Okay, so this is at later time. This is at later time. This is the information traveling backwards, trying to shut down the liquid. You can imagine that vertical lines are going backwards. Okay, so let me erase that so that you don't have any clumsiness there. Okay, so now let's read step by step of what I uh, explained. Flowing water is suddenly stopped at t equal to zero at a and delta p created at this a travels back at velocity c which is speed of sound to stop new layers dm of flowing water okay so the force on this dm element causes its momentum change in t to t plus dt seconds here what is the value of that force the value of delta p multiplied by area of cross section assume it is pi r square should be equal to dm by dt into the v v is becoming zero right so change in velocity is v itself and change in momentum is the value of dm into v divided by dt. Now, how do you write this value of dm? This entire bracket represents this dm. Simple. The density of water multiplied by volume of this element that I have shaded. Volume is nothing but area multiplied by the length that I already uh, convinced you that it is cdt. So that's what I have substituted. So upon simple cancellation of pi r square on both sides and dt here, you would end up getting a cute little expression for the excess pressure that has been created, which contains, as you could see, both the velocity of sound and also the velocity of the flow along with density of water. Now, this excess pressure, which actually acts with the uh, uh, complete surroundings of this DM element, you should realize not only acts on the axial direction, but also on the radial direction of the DM element. You could see on the right side, I'm trying to depict that the pressure acts from all directions. Actually, pressure is not having any direction. It's the pressure force that acts in the all directions. Okay. So what does it do to the pipe? Remember, this DM element is water. So if radially it is trying to come press the water, this one's Newton's third law effect on the pipe would be in the radially outward direction. That means to the pipe, it will try to expand. Okay, so the pipe will be under the expansive stress. Okay, right. So if this pipe is not made of sufficiently strong material, it will burst open. So that's why we are supposed to provide certain thickness to it. Okay, so that's what we are going to do in the next page. So let's go slowly. Again, a lot of things on the board, just follow my lead. So how to choose thickness to avoid bursting of this pipe? Okay, right, you don't want this kind of thing to happen. So if you are having um, pipes of different thicknesses like this, right, in order to choose it, you need to analyze the free body diagram of this pipe. So as I said in the previous uh, slide, the delta P tries to push the ra pipe radially outward. So this is the free body diagram of the entire pipe in an axial view. So in order to uh, involve the tension that is created in the solid part here of the thickness, I have to cut this pipe in my mind into half pipe and draw its FBD. So I'm cutting this half pipe and drawing the FBD of that half, the left half has been taken out. So the left half's force of tension is shown in this diagram. So the liquid inside will be pushing it, whereas the other half will be pulling it. 
okay right and what is the length of the pipe that i have taken the length is same as the length of the dm element in the previous slide so this cdt length or this cdt length has been the length which has been enlarged so that you can visualize okay right so under the critical case that means imagine the pipe is uh, about to burst in that situation the force that you have applied uh, using the water uh, or this excess pressure uh, depicted as this f should balance out the tension that is acting on this area layers okay so let me uh, draw that shaded region of the area watch it carefully the tension which is due to the physical contact of the left half is acting on this area if you carefully observe i'm trying to shade that area for your easy understanding even at the bottom there is a small area that on which this tension acts okay so how do you write that value of tension value of the tension would be written as the breaking stress or you could say the tensile strength sigma b multiplied by the thickness t into the length it's a rectangle right so length into breadth on the other hand what is the way to write the force f with which it is pushing this rectangle remember this force f will act on this entire rectangle okay it's a projection area the value of that projection area is again length which is cdt into breadth which is equal to 2r that's what i have written so when you rearrange you want the thickness remember t okay so don't get confused i know dt is the time where it has got cancelled on both sides small t with a different color i try to depict is the thickness of the pipe so thickness is equal to delta p into r by sigma b the expression for delta p that i got from the previous slide i'll try to substitute here okay so that's how you end up getting the critical thickness this is the thickness if you provide it will break exactly at that instant so in order to provide a safety factor you obviously uh, take a thicker pipe with a factor of eta in this question he has given it as five times okay so the t choice would be five times this t and that's what eta has been multiplied for so with all the numericals given in the question if you substitute the thickness of this pipe uh, to ensure that the bursting doesn't happen comes out to be 1.1 millimeter okay so now i hope you are ready for a practice question on a blast wave okay so this is spherical blast wave question which appeared in one of the national level examinations uh, more than once it's slightly difficult because of the language that is used in the question try going through it i have given a hint also here uh, the blast wave which is propagating in this particular medium uh, that medium consider it as an ideal gas for solving this problem it's a tough challenge okay right uh, it's not straightforward so if you give it a try and comment the value of the x that you will end up getting in this in the comment section below okay so uh, after a few days i'll try to come up with a solution if most of the students are not able to uh, understand or solve this problem in the physics surgery quickie series okay i hope you have fun with that question also you can have fun and also preparation at the same time with all the parallel series that are running in this channel all the series descriptions and and their links of the playlists are in the description below this video please try to patiently go through the description if you are a newcomer into this particular channel each and every video a lot of effort and care has been taken so that um, the students who are watching through uh, get a worth of their time every minute of it is very very important okay so in case you have loved the content I, I i would request you to watch at least two or three videos before giving it a like and please do share it with your friends and do subscribe to my channel in case you have not yet subscribed and um, i hope you will be coming back to visit other videos also and then we'll be meeting again see you then bye